Keith Thurman is a bit different than your average fighter. In fact, he's even different than your average world champion. And in Thurman's case, different is interesting. Thurman brings a thoughtful and cerebral, if not intellectual, mindset into the ring. When he's not training, you're likely to see Thurman reading a book. And for him, that intellectual approach to both life and boxing makes all the difference. Thurman came to Showtime four years ago. He had already bested a pair of former world titleists, Carlos Quintana and Jan Zabek, and those wins had established him as a welterweight to watch. And while we were watching, he was thinking, and thinking big. In July 2013, Thurman faced Argentina's undefeated Diego Gabriel Chavez in San Antonio. At the time, Thurman was 20-0 with 18 KOs, and he did nothing to damage his reputation as a power puncher. For three rounds, Thurman and Chavez played the game of quien es más macho, testing each other by trading big shots at every opportunity. As the fight progressed, Thurman shifted the brawl into more of a boxing match and edged ahead. In the ninth, the fight was still to be won when Thurman crippled Chavez with a hook to the body. Oh, body shot there by Thurman, and it drops Chavez to one knee. It was the first time Chavez had ever been down, and he never fully recovered. In the tenth, the end came emphatically, with a right hand downing Chavez once more. Thurman on the attack, swarming Chavez along the ropes, and Chavez is again down on the canvas. Perfect timing. And this fight is over. Keith Thurman stops Diego Chavez. The welterweight division was heating up, and Thurman was red hot. It seems an unwritten rule that every contending welterweight has to fight warhorse Jesus Soto Carras. But fighting Soto Carras and beating him have been two different things. Fighting Soto Carras was a risk, but a calculated risk. Thurman and Soto Carras clashed at the Alamo Dome in December 2013. And again, Thurman's mind was what mattered the most. The first round was fantastic, with Thurman hurt by a right hand. Oh, Soto Carras comes back, and you underestimate Soto Carras, and you do so at your own peril, as we are in the midst of a firefight early. And then Soto Carras staggered by a crunching uppercut and some body shots. Soto Carras staggers backwards in the dying stages of round one. Thurman subsequently moved the fight to ring center, repeatedly drew Carras in, and punished him with counters. But it wasn't all one-way action. Soto Carras landed plenty of his own shots, and what was glaringly apparent was that while the use of a boxing brain is always beneficial, a reliable chin is a necessity. In the fifth, a left uppercut floored Soto Carras. And down goes Soto Carras! Wow! Sensing he had hurt his opponent, Thurman began to chip away, and in round nine, the weapon of choice was his left hook, with Thurman dropping and stopping his rugged rival. A left hand, and Charlie steps in, the fight is over! Keith, one time Thurman, remains unbeaten! Thurman was 25 years old, 22 and 0, and as promising a young fighter as anyone could name. Thurman began his 2014 campaign in April of that year when he took on a former world titleist in Julio Diaz at the StubHub Center in Carson, California, which figured to be a war turned into a disappointingly abbreviated battle. Oh, the left uppercut jacking the jaw of Diaz! The left hand to the top of the head convinced Diaz to take a knee in round two, and after the third, the veteran surrendered in his corner due to a rib injury. Diaz never fought again. Three fights on Showtime, Thurman had three KOs, but nobody KOs everybody. His next fight was a Las Vegas date with Italy-based Leonard Bundu. In the first round, Thurman, coming off an injury to his left shoulder, scored a knockdown. Oh, and Thurman already drops him with that left! Bundu was undefeated, but he was also 40 years old and clearly out of his depth. Thurman attacking the body. So it was not unreasonable to anticipate another early round blowout. But the clever Bundu fought to survive and Thurman opted to finesse his way to a 12-round unanimous decision win, winning every round in the process. Better to be smart.
In January 2015, Thurman was elevated from interim WBA welterweight titleist to full champion. His first defense came two months later, and it was a historically significant fight. The first presentation of premier boxing champions was Thurman versus former two-division titleist Robert the Ghost Guerrero, and the fight, which aired on NBC, marked the return of boxing to primetime network television. Thurman Guerrero was the first primetime fight on NBC in 30 years, and it was watched by more than 4 million viewers. It was a grueling fight. Although Thurman was getting the better of the exchanges, both fighters showed the effects. Thurman broke through in the ninth, flooring a bloody Guerrero. But in the immediate aftermath of the knockdown, Guerrero accelerated, especially in round 10, and over the course of the last three rounds, the action was both fierce and sustained. Thurman won a clear-cut unanimous decision and what is best described as having been a one-sided, competitive fight. Four months later, Thurman faced another lefty and another former champ in Brooklyn's Luis Colazzo. The fight took place in Tampa, only 20 miles from Thurman's hometown of Clearwater. If Guerrero was physical and confrontational, Colazzo was slick and cunning. It was a surprise then that toward the end of round five, and with Thurman in control, Colazzo connected with a devastating left to the body. The effect was instantly apparent, with Thurman backing to the ropes in obvious pain. Colazzo with his best work. It looked like it hurt him in the body a little bit. A champion who wants to extend his reign is, at some point, going to have to prove he can overcome adversity. Thurman did just that, and in the sixth, he opened a nasty cut over Colazzo's right eye. The seventh was all Thurman, and after that round, Colazzo indicated that blood from the cut was hampering his vision. Okay, let me see. Okay. You want me to stop this? Since the cut had been opened by a punch, as opposed to a butt, Thurman was declared the winner by TKO. The fight had not gone smoothly, with the scare in the fifth round a potentially career-changing moment. But Thurman had survived and advanced. And that advancement took him to his biggest bout to date, a showdown with his third consecutive former world champion, Sean Porter. The title fight was televised by CBS, the first primetime boxing show on the network in almost 40 years. What an advertisement Thurman Porter turned out to be for big time boxing. The welterweights tore into each other from the very start, and the momentum repeatedly shifted. Early on, viewers and ringsiders knew they were watching a candidate for fight of the year. Fireworks at the end of the third round! Porter is all energy, a short pressure fighter who overwhelms you with his speed and athleticism. He and Thurman fought furiously and intelligently, but for me, the most impressive part of Thurman's performance was his understanding of what was going to be needed to win. Heavy exchange, oh, and Porter's knee buckled after that left. The frenetic pace forced Thurman, the thinking man's fighter, to rely on something other than strategy. He won a close but unanimous decision because of his drive, his cojones, and his will to win. That's a complete fight. Big fights make more big fights, and on March 4th, Thurman will clash in a welterweight unification battle with fellow champion Danny Garcia. The fighters are a combined 60 and 0. They're in their respective primes, and the winner will hold the unofficial title as the best fighter in the best division in boxing.